Part two of the Bridgecom repeater setup for Ham Radio 2.0 starts now. Okay, great. <laughs> so if you watch the first part of this video, located right... Nope, right there. <laughs> right there, there's the card for the first part of this video. It shows you how to go through the... Uh, software for the setup today we're going to connect and this this device here is uh, purchased at repeater builder uh, let me pull up that site real quick okay this site is purchased at repeaterbuilder.com it is built by Scott in 3 XCC x-ray Charlie Charlie and it's built with the DB9 connector on the back so you've got a cable and maybe the cable comes with it. I'm not sure on that. I haven't actually looked at the... Um, I got a link that I will post in the comments below about the site um, on Repeater Builder where you can purchase this exact unit here. And then it just runs Pystar. And everybody knows what Pystar looks like. We're going to go through that here in just a moment. But the back of the repeater has a DB25 plug for this. And the back of the Raspberry Pi has a DB9 plug. So then we're going to put... And let me show you something real quick. So, if we take this right here, this is a close-up of the actual Raspberry Pi with the board in it. Um, obviously, it's got the ports here. It, this is a Pi 3 board, and it, so it does have built-in Wi-Fi. There's, you can see the repeater builder right there, if you can see it. Bring it back and zoom in on it a little bit, yeah. Repeater Builder, Repeater Builder STM 32-DVM version 2A. So, yeah, I think it's focused anyway. Um, so, and then right here is where you will adjust your receiving, your transmit, and your RSSI. You can kind of see that on the top of the, 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 the red board back here. RX, TX, and RSSI. According to the folks at Bridgecom, you never have to mess with the RSSI. There's a light right here uh, when you're adjusting the, the receive that you can adjust the receive all the way to the right. And when this light comes on, you just back the receive off to the left a little bit, and then the light will turn off. And that should um, calibrate your receive sensitivity for DMR. And then the transmit option you're supposed to do with a spectrum analyzer, which I don't have. So, um, but it's this, this one specific one, this specific unit has been already customized for this repeater by Bridgecom. Now again, Bridgecom doesn't sell this. This is sold by Repeater Builder, but since this is a demo model that they had, uh, they set it up for me. But it was, um, I just, all I, basically all I've done is reprogrammed it to my frequency and call sign and my settings within Pystar. So, according to Bridgecom, you would go into the MMDVM Cal program under SSH and, T and transmit in DMR and set it for a 2.9 kilohertz deviation on a service monitor. Um, a lot of times you'll read 2.5 is the correct setting for Pi-Star for transmit on um, a, a repeater, but apparently they use 2.9 kilohertz and they say it works better, so... Since it's their repeater, I guess they should know. Um, and then that is it, pretty much. So we'll look at the Pi Star here. And, and again, it has Wi-Fi, but it also has, since it's a, a normal Pi 3, it has a, a an Ethernet connection. And according to Bridgecom, they're like, yeah, it'll work on, on Wi-Fi, but it'll work a lot better on uh, Ethernet. So And that's fine, because Motorola repeaters all require Ethernet anyway. Um they don't, Motorola repeaters, if you're used to working with that for DMR, they don't have uh, um, Wi-Fi. And, of course, we could set this repeater up as a Fusion repeater. We could set it up as a D-Star repeater. We could set it up as a P25 repeater. Honestly, one of these days, I'm probably going to get a Pi Star and connect it to a couple of Motorola mobile radios and build a repeater out of it and do, uh, do a, I, I want to do a P25 repeater. Uh, maybe a simplex repeater, I don't know, but I really want to do some P20, P25 stuff on this show, so I think, I think that would be fun, and, um, 
it's one of those modes that uh, is talked about not as much as other modes. So I just think it would be a good experiment to do. Okay, so what I've done is I took the Pi. At the, at the time of this recording, I don't have Ethernet capability inside of my shack. I've got a port on the wall right there that's got an Ethernet port, one Ethernet port and a port to run like satellite TV to. And the shack is sitting in my backyard and I've, I've got it buried in a conduit going back up to the house where everything lives, all the connections come into. But um, about, I don't know, sometime last summer, maybe sometime last fall, I don't remember exactly when it was, I had um, the, the internet stopped working. Well, it turns out it was where it runs uh, out of the conduit coming out of the ground in the house over there. It got hit with a weed or something. I don't, I don't know what happened to it, but it got severed. So I'm gonna, I've got some uh, UV shielded um, ethernet that I'll be wrapping together on a rope and pulling it through the conduit to replace the old one with the new one. But at the time of this video, I don't have that done yet. So I took the Pi Star back in just now the one I just had in, in the previous session of this video, and I plugged it into my switch in the house, and this is what it looks like right here. So, obviously, we've got... Boom. So, we log into PyStar just the same way we always do. Um, I didn't change the password on it yet. I probably will once I get this thing set up permanently. But these are your general configuration settings here. The host name is pi-star UHF. Uh, I changed it to my call sign and my subscriber ID for one of my repeaters. This is my coordinated frequency for my DMR repeater in Grapevine. Of course, I have it in Grapevine. There's my URL. This STM32DVM is the Pi hat, the radio modem type that was already set for me for this specific repeater. And um, we are connected to, we would be connected. Now, again, I don't have the Pi Star connected to the repeater because I'd have to take the, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do a third part to this video. This is part two you're watching right now. I've got a roll around uh, SKB um, rack, rack mount box that's got wheels on it that you can roll around for like portable uh, musicians and whatnot. They, they take their, their, sound equipment down uh, around to different shows they got um, but but these are the, the repeater is rack mountable just like my DMR repeater is rack mountable so I'm um, I've already taken my DMR repeater out of my rack mount case that I used to have here at the house and I've deployed it elsewhere that's actually the repeater that's at Lake Fork right now uh, which is a Motorola XPR 8300 this one's going to replace it in that rack mount with a shelf uh, with a duplexer and with the Pi Star and maybe with an external radio, I haven't decided on that yet. I'm going to do another video when I put all that together. All of it's sitting in the garage right now. I've just got to put it all together, and then we'll put the repeater on the air. And so we'll do a part three to this episode. Probably going to do a lot more episodes about this type of thing upcoming on the show. So anyway, these are the settings right here. It would be connected to Brandmeister right now if uh, on 3102 if it was connected up and plugged in. And then really all you have to do is there see see it's on it's on wi-fi because I, I connected it to my wi-fi but when i uh when i went to this 1.53 uh ether um address in my browser yesterday when i was configuring it it didn't want to open the pi star dashboard if i go to the uh ethernet when the when it's plugged into ethernet if i go to the ethernet ip because it's pulling an, one ip for the ethernet one ip for the wi-fi if i go to the ethernet ip which is 152 right now, you can see, uh, it works just fine. So I'd have to unplug it from the... And I haven't tried that yet, so maybe I'll tinker with that later on. But you can see right here at the top, this is what I was looking for. I thought it was at the bottom, it was at the top. Controller mode is duplex repeater, or half duplex on hotspots. So, um, so you're going to want to, of course, set that. And then, of course, we could set... Uh, and there's one for D-star repeater. We could set it up as a D-star repeater. We could set it up as a YSF, P25, NXDN, all this kind of good stuff. Um, but, of course, we're going to do DMR because that's what I like to do. So, anyway, that is what you would do. So, all you need to do is take the Pi Star, and it's got these Velcro uh, 
mounts that they put on it after after market after the fact that holds down the uh, the Raspberry Pi. It interfaces into the back of the repeater. You bring power up, and it's the Pi Star is powered by micro USB like normal, and then the um, the repeater is powered by a regular AC line like what you'd see on the back of a computer tower or the back of a, a widescreen computer monitor. Bring that up, plug in your duplexer, of course, plug in your Pi Star, bring the Pi Star up, and let it all boot up and get and get situated. And then you would go into, uh, when you're programming your repeater, you're going to want to program it as um, wideband, not 12.5 kilohertz, but 25 kilohertz. That surprised me. That surprised me. But, um, but that's what they say to program it as. So I was like, oh, okay. Cool. So I'll program it as wideband, and they said to put your transmit, your encode, when you key into the repeater, transmit out of the radio, receive into the repeater, on like some, they said, you don't have to run a PL tone, but if you do run a PL tone, um, because it's on digital, it ignores the PL tone. But if you turn a PL tone on, as I understand it, if you turn the PL tone on, it'll lessen the interference from nearby analog signals. So they suggested to turn the PL tone on and set it to a different PL tone than what most of the repeaters around you use. Okay. So they said that's not necessary. You don't have to do that, but that's their suggestion. So good. Okay. So in the next episode, um, we're going to put all this together. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it all together in a box and I'm going to set it out somewhere. And we might even go up to like, um, I don't know. We might go up somewhere else and do it and, uh, shoot, I might take it out. I might take it out to the deer lease. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what I do. I'll take it out to the deer lease and set it up and uh, put an antenna on it and just show everybody what it looks like. So, 73 guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the comments on the first part of the video. Again, that is right here. It's backwards in the screen. It's right here. You can see a link uh, to that video right here. And um, we'll catch you next time.